We'll just give about another 30 seconds. We've got a lot of folks here. And we'll see if we can get some more falcons in the room. We'll get started after our little warm-up song. Thank you for being here. I am going to, so we've had some time to look at our agenda and students, hopefully you have your materials prepared and ready. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing so that we can see each other's faces some more. Um, super happy to have so many Falcons here. You guys, our student-led conference is such a big part of Escalante. And we talk a lot with your students about how being able to like talk about the things that you've accomplished or are working on um, or all your strengths and goals, those are real life skills. Um, and this is an authentic chance for those students to practice that. You are their audience. So thank you for being here and giving them that opportunity. Um, as just a, a welcome, we wanted to give all the Falcon teachers kind of a chance just to say hello um maybe give you a little tidbit about what's going on in classes right now you can obviously get all the details from your student um and then it will be our falcon's first turn to do some presenting um so if you have questions as we're going i invite you to please put those in the chat um and since i already have the mic i will just start again if you haven't met me, I'm Miss Thompson. I'm the social studies teacher for all of our Falcons. Um, and we have been working on a fun expedition about citizenship and exploring it from a ton of different perspectives from a social studies lens. Most recently, we're looking at um, citizens and geography. So the fact that all global citizens are geographers in, way, in a way is our current case study or our current focus. Um, and then our next focus is going to surround human rights, which will be a, a fun way to um, end the year with our final project coming after that. Um, and it's been really cool that we've been focusing on this expedition in social studies, because on the weeks that your students are not in social studies, they are exploring the same guiding question over in Miss Dalton's class. So I will kick it over to Miss Dalton. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, in language arts, we are continuing on with our guiding question of how we ourselves can be better citizens of the world and how we can improve the world around us. And so currently, <clears throat> excuse me, we are preparing for a Socratic seminar on our, are we silver week or purple week? I can never keep those things straight. But we are looking at the issue of fast fashion and where our clothing is made, who's making it, and what happens to all these textiles. And from here, students are going to continue this process by continuing to write and research about a problem of their choosing as we fig uh, finish out the year, just exploring how we as uh, human beings can help make the world a better place. So thanks for being here again and really looking forward to all the interaction tonight. Miss Rose, up back to you. <laughs> Sounds like a newscast, Ms. Dalton. Um, it's good to see all of our Falcons here and of course our Falcon extended families and pets. So awesome to see them on Zoom. That was one benefit here. Uh, I am Miss Rose and I am the Falcon math teacher. We have just started getting into our algebra this year and our students are starting to work with some numeric and algebraic order of operations. So students are starting to learn how to or will um, work on substituting with their variables. So some kind of scary words at first, but we're getting into the fact that not as big of a deal as some of them think. And then um, we're going to continue with some work with expressions uh, using our algebraic and numeric pieces there, looking at translating phrases, looking at properties, and we'll see if we get into dabbling with some equations by the end of the year as well. So they're starting to bridge into that algebra and pre-algebra right now. And then let's head to Mr. Trono. Thanks, Ms. Rose. Hey, hey everybody. 
uh, we're about done with physical science now. We're moving into uh, earth science and life science. And earth science will be looking at uh, earth forces and water cycle. And then when we transition over to life science, we'll be looking at ecosystems. And then in the end, uh, probably for most of May, is maybe my favorite thing of the whole year is doing our world famous river study. And we'll be studying the same uh, guiding question that Ms. Dalton and Ms. Thompson are using. We'll be looking at a guy named John Wesley Powell and his adventures down the Colorado River and uh, what kind of citizen he was. Uh, and my big goal for May is to move my labs from inside to outside. So I think you'll, you'll really like that a lot. My, I normally say, do you have any questions, but I'm kind of afraid to ask that now. So I'm gonna move on and uh, have, at this time, have you uh, share something with your parents. I'd like you to take about three minutes and pull out that sheet that you filled out in our classrooms about brain states. You remember the one that goes from terror all the way to calm? And then uh, after about three minutes, we'll check in with you and I'll turn it over to Mr. Lennox, who's kind of the mastermind, no, or master brain, should I say, behind <laughs> all this? No, okay. Well, he's the mastermind. I'll turn it over to him. And thanks for showing up. So you guys are on, share with your parents now. Okay, you've got about 30 seconds left. And then I'll, at that point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Linux. That felt like about 30 seconds. I'm not sure if it was, but <laughs> let's, let's call it 30. Um, hi everybody, my name's um, Ian Lennox. I'm the, one of the counselors at Escalante. Um, and this year, I'm super lucky to get to bring this kind of information that your students just shared with you to your kids, um, to parents and to staff. So um, my role has been kind of doing some trainings with kids and teachers and, and adults around um, your brain and kind of understanding what state you're in, like your students hopefully just described to you. Um, so the fancy name for it is called the neurosequential model of education, but basically what it means is we all have brains and if we're able to understand what part of our brain we're thinking in or using at the time, um, 
we're able to communicate more effectively and also like un understanding what brain state another person is in so you know how to communicate with them um, when they're in that brain state. Um, so I've gotten to do some videos with your kids. I, I look forward to being in person in your classrooms, but unfortunately I've just been zooming in some recordings. Um, so yeah, next year in eighth grade, we'll keep doing this kind of learning, um, but I just think it's super important. And the Falcon team in particular has done an amazing job of implementing this. So I appreciate your teachers like using this language with your classes and with um, in these meetings and stuff like that. So I think it's super helpful for kids, adults, your fur animals, everybody's got brains and knowing what brain state you're in is so helpful in um, helping each other out. Um, so rather than re, uh, reiterating what your kids just talked to you about, I'm gonna share one slide that kind of helps explain um, why it can be helpful to know what brain state you're in. And then I'll also um, in the chat box after I'm done talking, I'll put the YouTube video that I recorded that um, your kids saw in crew that shows me describing um, the five brain states. You can watch it at home if you want or just kind of talk about it with your students just because, again, I think this information is super helpful. Um, so bear with me while I share my screen here. And there we go here. Okay, so there's tons of information around the neurosequential model, and a lot of that, that's a big word, but for parents, um, on the left side, you'll see this upside down triangle with regulate, relate, reason. Um, and we call that the sequence of engagement, which basically means like, before you communicate with somebody, this is how it goes through their brain. So it starts at the bottom um, at your brainstem. If you're not regulated, so if you're not calm, like if you're up in your fear and terror brain, you might not be able to use the parts of the brain that are more towards the top in your cortex. So you might be not be able to think like yourself or like stay organized and kind of those more complex thinking things. So information comes in the brainstem and the key is to be calm and regulated, right? So if you're in your calm and alert brain, you're able to do that. So the information can then go up through your brain and then the next zone is kind of like your relational brain. So we learn best from people we know and feel comfortable with and like feel safe around. So like your pa parents, teachers, principals, counselors, like um, us all knowing that we need to be able to relate with students and students relate with us is the next kind of chain in their step in the chain, right? So being calm and feeling safe and then having a relationship with the person that you're interacting with is huge to let that information get to your cortex, is where, which is where you can really do like, that's the most, um, powerful part of your brain, right? It's where you do all your thinking and like where your personality and all those things are. So when you're able to reason, you're up in your cortex of your brain. Um, so that's kind of the steps we're taking, reiterating or talk, communicating with students um, and students are communicating with us. So if I come up to a student and I realize they're in their fear brain, which means they're down here in their brainstem and they might feel like, oh man, I'm in trouble or my, like you can feel your heart beating really fast. Like I'm not gonna ask them where their homework is from that day because they're not able to think that far down the road. So first I might take the kid for a walk or go play basketball and just do something to get their body moving. Maybe ask them about their weekend and relate to them and just ask something that has nothing to do with the topic I actually wanna talk about. And then go up to reasoning and be like, hey, like how about we try to you know, grab this notebook and get some extra work done. Um, so basically the left side just shows how the most effective way to communicate with a brain. So regulate, relate, reason. And then this graph on the right, I always like to talk about, um, this is an example of what you don't wanna have happen like at home or at school, right? So the adult um, brain is down here on the bottom and the child's brain is up here, or anybody, it could be a child, it could be an adult, it could be your dog um, on the top. Um, so if you are um, having an interaction with a kid or another adult and you're in your alert brain, um, but that other person's up in their alarm, so maybe you're feeling a little more stress or anger or whatever it is, um, as the person on the top starts moving up into their fear and terror brain, if the person on, who is having the interaction is not keeping themselves regulated and staying calm, at some point there's going to be some sort of a blowout because they're both going up that um, continuum of getting more and or less and less regulated. Um, and it might come out as you yelling at the other person or you walking out of the room or something like that. Um, so rather than the adult or the person who's more regulated going up this continuum, like taking a break or helping the student regulate um, and just remaining calm because the, the more you escalate, the more the person that's with you will escalate. So we always say a dysregulated adult cannot regulate a kid, right? So if I'm coming in mad, I'm not gonna be able to help, help a kid feel calm. So we have to focus on ourselves um, and make sure that we're calm in those interactions um, and same for students. So helping them realize where they're at and where we're at is super important. So 
Um, I don't want to take up too much time, but I appreciate you all listening. Um, as always, if you have questions, email me um, and I'll drop that YouTube link in the chat box because um, if, if my school counseling profession doesn't work out, I'm hoping to be a YouTube sensation. So these videos are my ticket out. <laughs> I'm joking. I love my job. So thank you for listening. Um, have a great night. Falcons, you rule. We'll see you all at school tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you, Lennox. And um, we'll be sending out just the recording of this conference too afterwards. So Lennox, we can include your YouTube on that as well. Um, all right, we're about to transition to our biggest spotlight of the evening. So before we go there, since we just talked about brain states and how that could affect what we're doing, I want everyone to take a moment and and so when I say everyone, I mean students and families, take a moment, what brain state are you in? Students, you're about to present to your family, what brain state are you in? Family, you should know where your presenter's at. And students, you should know what brain states your audience is at. So take a minute, go around your room, and I want everyone to try to identify what brain state they're in before we present. So you have a minute. All right, we're coming back. Okay, so now that we all are aware of our own and each other's brain states, students, it is going to be your turn. You're going to, we're gonna give us 10 minutes. And in that 10 minutes, you should be presenting your artifact that you chose and using that script that you prepared for how your artifact shows perseverance. And then I also want you to share your Howells reflection and the goal that you set for yourself for the fourth quarter. So families um, and audience, we ask that you give that your students time to present both pieces and then go back to ask clarifying questions um, at the end. That way they don't get cut off in the middle um, and run out of their 10 minute time or whatever that may be. Okay, so if that sounds good to folks, make sure your mic's on mute. You can choose to have your camera or on or you can turn it off. Um, we'll be muted too, and I'm gonna start that 10 minute timer. Students, have fun. All right, uh, before we move into kind of our wrap up piece and giving us a chance for some uh, question and answer sessions, I see a few things starting to come in. Um, just from teacher's perspective, uh, our kids, it's kind of an interesting time frame of our two weeks on and two weeks off. And I know our Falcons work super hard on their work that they've presented tonight and uh, with some kind of condensed time frame there. So I'm hoping that they got a chance to share a lot with you. You got to see a little bit of a picture of what they've been doing and some things that they're excited about, things that they're proud about. And one thing I would love to see because I get to live only with one crew at a time um, with our SLC work, I'm curious. Um, so Falcons, you can go ahead and put in here or even 
assign it to maybe a family member here, but I'm curious what your artifact was or what class you chose to focus on for your perseverance. Um, this would be a cool thing. I, I feel lucky we've been living in our um, in-person world. This would be a fun thing for a poll, but um, that takes a little bit more to, to add to tonight. So we'll use the chat for a minute to see just um, the types of artifacts or um, your focus for perseverance tonight. So I'll give us a minute to start letting those come in. That was so cool to see in the chat, and I'm sure there might be a few more trickling in, but I think it speaks to our Falcons and our students so much that um, we've got kids that are sharing just all kinds of things and finding a kind of a bright spot and something that they're proud of, something that they enjoyed and really being able to highlight that. And um, it's really cool to see kind of that variety of um, work and just um, everything from something super current to people that chose some stuff that was kind of back in like November, October when we were last in person and some things. Um, they're kind of everywhere in between. So really cool to see. Thank you guys for sharing all of that in there. And um, I can only imagine um, the, the work that you got to share with your families. So um, at this time tonight, I really appreciate everyone who was able to join us. I do want to invite you to stick around. We've got um, Ms. Osby, our other school counselor is on as well, I think. And Mr. Tanako um, from our administration is here today too. So they are certainly another asset for us tonight for any questions um, that you guys have. So if you've got a question that uh, you'd like kind of a bigger audience for or one of those people to help answer tonight, that would be great. If there is something more specific to a class or a teacher, uh, email or phone call is probably a great way to follow up and uh, we'd love to get back with you. So if you want to stick around, feel free. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here tonight and we'll see all of our Falcons tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Cool. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bye. Fadis, are you still out there? No? Yeah? <laughs> hey, Fadis, are you still out there? <laughs> yeah, I'm about to leave. Well, it's, I'm so happy you showed up tonight. I'm really proud of you that you came. Yeah. You know, I, I, I need to give you a Jolly Rancher tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Or Friday. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming, Faris. We were talking that perhaps we could have a quick Zoom with his parents tomorrow after school. So I'll check in with you all in the morning and see if there's a good time for that. Yeah. Faris, do you want to say what you what you want, what your parents would like to hear? Um, just the usual. <laughs> oh, see, what I was told was. <laughs> about you yeah yeah also also though 
All right. So Anyways. everybody's thinking of good things to say. <laughs> okay. Got it. See ya. Bye. Bye. Adios. He cracks me up. I love that kid. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like my parents really want to hear from you some compliments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not a problem. I just called home last Friday with po a positive phone call. <laughs> uh, he was very concerned about a Spanish translator, though. So perhaps we can work that out. Would that be Miss Fletcher? David, could you help us out with that? Yeah, um, I've got uh, to help with volleyball practice tomorrow. So, but if it can happen during during um, like a plan period, I could I, I could for sure translate for you guys. I'll catch up with him and crew in the morning, and we'll we'll figure out when mom or dad or both are around, and I'll okay. send an email to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Compliments. Oh. Um. Oh, let me stop there.